Hey guys, Morgan's Maintenance, getting close to mowing season, time to get that lawnmower out, get it tuned up, uh, ready to go for the season, plus it's just a good thing to take care of your mower, these things aren't cheap anymore, you know, this one's even just a lawn tractor, it's not some fancy zero turn, uh, but these things range from, you know, $1,500 to $10,000, just depends on what size and, you know, what motors and all those things that you have on it, so... The more you take care of something like this as a homeowner, the less of them you're going to have to buy over the course of time, which means it makes it a better investment. Uh, so this one particular is a Cub Cadet GT 50 inch. Uh, I bought this one at the end of last mowing season because I was actually waiting for some parts for my uh, newer mower that I've got, or it's a used new mower that I'm working on that's uh, going to work out better for me. But I used this in the time being uh, to get the job done. And now I'm going to be selling it. But before I sell things, just like if I was getting this out for my own self, I like to make things as good as possible for whoever that next owner is, get it to where it's in the best condition that it can possibly be so that, you know, I don't have to worry about did I sell them something that was just on the verge of something bad about to happen to it. You know, you never know, but it's always best to give things or to sell things to people in the best condition you possibly can. Uh, so some things that you might want to do whenever you get your mower out. One is you want to check that battery voltage. You probably want to hook it up on a charger and let it charge because if it's been sitting all winter, it's probably a little bit low, might not even start. Uh, another thing you want to double check is the belt. You want to open that up, look at it, make sure there's no you know rips in it, uh, that it doesn't look like it's about to break, that it's not dry rotted, things like that. Something else is you might want to change your blades. Either get you some new blades like this or take your old blades off and sharpen them. I like to keep two sets of blades. That way I can have one set on, one set that I can sharpen. And then over the course of the mowing season, if I need to change them, I can. But it's always good to have a spare just in case something happens. You know, you hit a rock with one of these and it bends it. You know, it's, it's nice to always have one there on the ready to go but now i'm not going to do those today i've already actually done that uh, on this mower today what i'm going to be doing is the engine maintenance kit uh, this one's for this particular model mower again the cub cadet gt50 it's the Kohler 7000 series so this is going to include your oil filter your fuel filter air filter spark plug and then the oil all those things are included in this this is going to run you about 60 bucks but it's got everything in there it's factory parts like oem parts so it's not aftermarket parts now you can get a cheaper version of this on amazon uh, for your mower in particular typically it's not going to include the oil but you might run about 20 bucks but it's not going to be oem parts it's going to be aftermarket parts sometimes those fit well sometimes they don't so that's just a gamble uh, that you're going to take but i'd always recommend just going with what they tell you to go with so again this one's for this particular model but they have kits like this for almost every mower that's out there that includes all these things i'm going to change it on this mower today to get this ready for me to sell thought i might as well record it in case it's useful to some of you out there maybe you need to do this kind of a tune-up on your mower so hopefully this video helps in that regard but let's go ahead and get started installing this engine maintenance kit so you don't really need a lot of tools for this one of the things i'm going to need is for the oil filter change i'm going to need some kind of a container like this uh, to catch the oil i just use a small container like this because it's easier in the location for me to hold that up and under there while the oil drains and then i move it into whatever i'm going to take it to dispose of you just need to do that in accordance with whatever your area has for the spark plug change i'm going to need a 3 8 ratchet because that's what my um 5 8 spark plug removal i got a swivel ratchet uh, socket here so that's what i'm going to need for the spark plug and then you might possibly need just depends on how tight it is on there uh, you might want to get you a flathead screwdriver out just so you can pop that boot off so that's the things you'll need for the spark plug and then for the fuel filter and the air filter the air filter i don't think you need anything on this one the fuel filter you're going to need a pair of pliers of some kind for two clamps that are on the hose I can typically get it done with these Knipix uh, 180 Cobras, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and get out uh, to use on that. So really, that's all the tools that you're going to need. So it's not a lot of tools, not a lot of things that you have to have to get this job done. Uh, so it's very easy to do. It's just a matter of replacing old things with new things, so it's not all that complicated. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start out on this mower just to make life easier. I'm going to take the hood off because it's very easy on this particular mower. You just pull the hood up. There's one little harness over here on this side that's controlling your lights. You just unhook that. And then following that, you just lift up and it comes off. It just seats in right here with these little hinges right here. They're all plastic. Comes off that easy. You might as well go ahead and get it out of your way. It makes life a whole lot easier. 
Since we're over here, we'll go ahead and change out the spark plug, which is in this location right here. Uh, here's the part number for this particular model spark plug. Again, that's the Kohler brand. I'm sure they got lots of other versions. Uh, you can try pulling the boot off by hand. If you can't get it, just get something behind there, like, a, like again, that flathead screwdriver, and it will pop right off. Uh, kind of inspect down in there, see if you got any trash. Get your socket in there, break that loose, remove the spark plug. And again, this spark plug socket also will hold that spark plug so I don't have to worry about it getting stuck down in there, which on a mower is not typically something that happens as easy anyways. So once you get it loose, you can typ typically even just come out here and grab it by your fingers and finish loosening it out the rest of the way. And here you can see this is the original. It's got that same part number on it. Uh, there's the wear on it. So we're just going to go ahead and change this out. And you might just want to eyeball it and make sure it's kind of similar to the same. You can check the gap and all that if you want to. Uh, being OEM, I'm just going to go ahead and say it's good. We're going to get it changed out. Get it hand tightened, make sure that you're not cross threaded in some way. And then we're just gonna go back in, tighten that up. I'm gonna replace the boot. Make sure it clicks on. That's one down. This engine again has two spark plugs. The other one's on the exact opposite side. You'll see it underneath this fuel line here. Uh, hopefully you can get that up in there. So again, the process is exactly the same. I'm gonna pop this boot off. Uh, double check, look down there, make sure everything's good. You can see that one. That one is extremely dirty, as you can see there. Get the new one started by hand. Make sure you get that boot clicked on. So that's the spark plugs. Now let's move on to the air filter. The easiest is probably the air filter. That's located up here. Again, you just Pull back both these latches and this is something that throughout the season you might want to take off even if you're not changing it just clean it out blow it out those kinds of things uh, you can see here this one's quite dirty uh, it's just a matter of pulling it off try not to drop anything down in here you might even want to get you a rag and clean that out again this is kind of optional but any of this dust and dirt that's still in here that's just going to go into your new filter and again, you don't want to get anything down in here as much as possible. Uh, but you want to go ahead and try to clean off as much as you can. Again, see how dirty this one is. I'm sure it could barely breathe. Uh, so this definitely needs to be cleaned or changed. Uh, and I'm just going to like to change it because it's in my kit. So take the foam sleeve. Wrap that around the outside of your new filter. That just makes it easier to clean your filter. It catches all the big stuff. Slide it back down on top. Now you got the air filter changed. So now that's good to go as well. Again, very easy and something that's very simple to do. Very important to have that clean so that your engine's able to get the right airflow. Put the cover back on, snap it in place two down onto the next one so now we're going to change the fuel filter which is located right here you can tell which way it goes just by the shape of it but you also want to pay attention to the arrow in case you buy an aftermarket one it might not look exactly the same the arrow needs to go from the gas tank towards the engine because that's the way that the fuel is going to move again you've got two clamps here that i've got to pull loose slide off pull the hoses off and slide this in now whenever i undo this you can see i have gas in my tank uh, gravity is going to cause that gas to go ahead and come out of the hose so i'm going to go ahead and try to catch that 
in my gas can and go ahead and let that drain out so that I don't get that all over the place. So I'm gonna start by going ahead and clamping onto these hoses just to get it loose. Slide that on to where I'm past where the filter housing is. And you can just leave that on the hose. We're gonna come back and slide it back on when we get the new hose. Now my hose isn't long enough to reach my gas can from here if I pull it loose on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it from here and filter it as it's going through. Now, if you really wanted to, you could just do it real fast and just drop a little bit of gas. Uh, you could do that as well. Go ahead and take it out completely, slide the new filter up into the hose. So you can see that gas draining. I'm gonna go ahead and let my tank empty and then we'll get back to this. Once you have the gas slowed down to a trickle, you know, you can sit there and wait and wait and wait, but now I've got it to where it's dropping. Now's the time for me to change this. Again, paying close attention to that flow arrow. I'm gonna pull it off of this side and install it. I'm gonna get a little bit of gas, you know, on me. There's no way really around that with this. If you hold it up now at this point above that, you won't get a leak. Uh, so now we'll slide this on. Come down, slide this one on. So now that's installed. Other than we have to go back and we have to put these clamps back onto the filter itself. So there's the fuel filter, three down, one more to go. That's the oil filter, let's go ahead and get to that next. So this Cub Cadet comes with this little adapter on here for the drain tube. It allows you to put a plastic tubing on it. I don't have that, again, I think you get it with the mower when you buy them new. I bought this used, didn't have it with it. You can go buy you some uh, if you look up you know, your mower and find out what size that tube is. It's just a little piece of plastic tube. Sticks onto there. You could possibly even cut you a scrap piece of air hose if you have some laying around. But it's a matter of you just turn it a turn and then slide it out. It's hard to get to it sometimes. And if it's kind of a little bit stuck, you got to work with it. But as you pull this out, the oil will release and begin to drain. Uh, if you can see that there. While we're waiting for this to drain, let me show you the instructions on this oil filter. There's the part number for this particular model. Fill to base of threads with clean oil. That's to here. So you want to pour oil in here to get it up to that. That allows that filter to absorb oil. You want to let that happen for about two minutes. Then oil gasket before assembly. So normally I will just take my finger with the new oil, rub it around here, and then install it on there. And you wanna tighten three quarter to one turn after gasket contacts the base. So again, this isn't something that you need to get a crazy amount of torque on and some kind of wrench to tighten that up. Uh, you don't need to do that. Uh, this particular model, again, as well, is going to take 10W30. I got the Kohler brand. This is part of that kit. This is the thing that you won't get with the cheaper brands. This is the recommended oil. I'm sure you can use other oils, but I think that the, I'm a big fan of if it calls for something particular, I try to use it as much as possible as long as I can find it. So while we're waiting for that to drain, I am going to go ahead and fill up this filter with oil to the threads. And allow that to absorb so it says to do that for two minutes so again you can set this off to the side now while that's continuing to drain allow that new filter to absorb the oil uh, that's just what it says for it to do so then once we go ready get ready to install it i will take my finger and dip it in that oil rub it around this filter and then we'll install it and put that in once it starts slowing down and you start to see it to drip uh, you can go ahead and push that forward and that will stop the flow of oil Turn it to make sure you lock it in place. Uh, you might want to go ahead and just clean up that little end real fast so that you don't get oil on other stuff. Replace the cap. Now we need to take the filter out, which again should be just hand tightened in there hopefully. Uh, pull this out. You're going to get some more oil that's going to come out, but not a lot. So there's your old filter. I'm just gonna drop that down inside of that container. 
We're gonna clean this up as well. Just to keep it from falling on the floor. So again, gonna take that new filter. Again, you can take whatever oil you want to for this. I usually just get whatever I can. Rub it around that outside of that gasket just to make sure that it gets a good seal. And remember, we've got oil down in here, so you want to be quick about putting this in, even though a lot of it has been absorbed by that filter. So now we're going to turn it, get it on, get that tightened up. And then once your uh, seat hits there, it's just a matter of tightening it up a little bit past that three quarters to one turn turn so that's about right in there so we should be good now again make sure that you don't have any leaks coming out of either the bottom of the filter or the place where you your oil drain you want to check and make sure that that shut off because there's just a little mechanism in there these have been known to not shut off over time and you have to change these out um, mine seems to be doing well Again, I'm just going to leave that pan down there just to make sure in case something drips out as I'm refilling it. Again, my kit comes with two quarts of oil. Uh, that's what this actual thing calls for. So I'm going to put in the rest of the one that I've already opened that I started and put some into the filter. I'm going to put that in all the way. You might want to use a funnel here if it makes you feel more comfortable, but it's fairly easy. With this small you have good access to be able to get that uh, to pour in there so as i'm pouring this one in i'm just double checking and making sure i'm not seeing any oil come out down here so that's one quart and we'll open the second I'm not going to put all of this in. I'm going to go ahead and put most of it in, and then I'm going to double check and just make sure because you never know how much oil actually came out while you were draining it. You can see there I'm still on the low. Uh, very hard to probably pick that up, but I'm basically right around in this area right now. Now I'm right there at my second dot, which is full. And again, I probably have maybe, uh, I don't know if I can get that in the picture. It's a dark cam, but I probably bet I only have maybe this much more in there. Maybe you can see it. So I've got 100 milliliters left. So that's what I didn't drain out of the system. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and call that good. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the mower and just check it to make sure that I don't have any leaks under pressure. Everything looks good. I don't see any drips. So the last thing I have to do is replace the hood. Again, just putting those two hinges in the right location. Snaps down in there. <clears throat> Hook up my lights. Lower the hood, and then we're good to go. So there you go, guys. That's the Kohler engine maintenance kit. This one particular is for the 7000 series. Again, other brands, whether it's Honda, Kawasaki, whatever mower you have, I guarantee you there's a kit that's just like this. It's a matter of finding your fuel filter, your spark plugs, your oil filter, and your air filter on your mower, but it's the same process, changing those out. And again, this mower had two spark plugs. Some of them might only have one. But if you haven't done this for a while and you've had your mower for several years, you might want to do all these things to help keep that engine going so that you don't have issues throughout the year. But I hope that this video was useful in some ways. Hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate each and every one of you. You guys stay safe. Have a blessed day. And I'll see you on the next video.